Hey people, this is DJ. And this is Ish. And, and this, this is, is season four, four of Better, Better Let, Let Me Tell You. you. Cover of Bananarama. A Bananarama, Cruel yes. Summer. That's yes. kind of like, I remember you had to explain it to me. What was it? Hairspray, the movie with Zac Efron, was based on... The Hairspray, the musical on Broadway, which was based on the John Waters movie. Coño. <laughs> yes. Wow. It, it kind of it, yeah, it took a long journey there. But the the one with Zac Efron was not a remake of the original John Waters movie. No, it was a new movie based on the Broadway <laughs> show. But the Broadway yeah. show was based on the original. Yeah, but Cruel Lake. Summer was really good. So, oh well. Well, uh, well, I'm back. I think everybody hears a familiar voice. Yes, I'm back. What episode are we in? We are in episode one sixty two. It's been a few weeks. Yes. Hi everyone. Welcome to Pedro One sixty. We're in the one sixties. We are in the one sixties, my friend. I left you in the one fifties. Yes, you did. Yes. Oh. Well, time, everyone. Time marches on. Welcome to episode what? What one sixty two? I literally just said 162. it. One sixty two. One sixty two. Uh, welcome so, back. Um. So yeah, I was gone for a little bit. Um. So, welcome to our latest episode. Um, should I say why? I if you want. Out? If you want. It's up to you. So, <clears throat> I was um, out. Well, everybody, thank you again for joining us. Happy Friday. <laughs> yes. um, Pero Friday. Although this Friday is not that great with what happened yesterday here in South Florida. But we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. I feel like it's going to be a heavy episode. Yeah. Um, but um, I've been out in the last couple of weeks because... Um, Earlier this month, my grandmother passed away. And, um, you know, I was very, very, very close to my grandmother. Um, very, very close. And, um, you know, she passed away. She lived a very long life. Um, she, she was 94. 94 and a half. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she she had a lot of people that loved, loved her. Still do. And um, I was with her until the very end and um it kind of came unexpectedly mm -hmm. in a way because she you know she had slowed down a lot obviously right, right. um but you know what you know when she passed away that day nobody saw it coming that day right. um, it's not like she had been sick for years right no like that, no right, right, right. um so you know she died of you could say natural causes yeah so i mean i guess if there's a right way to go um but um you know, when somebody that's older passes away, people always tell you like, oh, you know, life well lived and, right, um, right. and um, you know, life well lived, I mean, and um, they had, you know, they had such a great long life and that's all true. And thankfully my grandmother, you know, she didn't have to deal with a lot of the stuff that a lot of people that make it to that age have to like alzheimer's and dementia right. and all these you know medical issues she she yeah. predominantly was healthy you know the last few months had been a little bit on the rougher side but still good compared to other people Correct. her age Correct. um but you know it it doesn't make the loss any of course less. Not. Of course. um you know because i'm my entire life has been yeah. with her so i don't know anything but my life right. with her right. and um you know who I, I mean, I've thought about a lot of things in the last couple of weeks, but um, I've thought a lot about Jenny Lorenzo because Jenny Lorenzo's abuela character, like I, I mean, not that I didn't appreciate her abuela character before, <laughs> but like now looking, you know, going through the experience mm -hmm. of losing, you right, know, right. my grandmother, like I think it's such a like kind of beautiful way that she's kept her grandmother of and her grandparents. Mm -hmm sort of memory alive right and like a kind of moving evolving it's a moving tribute yes mm -hmm. that um you know again not that i didn't appreciate her before but <laughs> it makes you see it from a different perspective oh, right you know right, right. um that uh you know th this the way our our grandparents are 
you know, when you grow up, you're like, ay, abuela, abuelo. But then, you know, you reach a certain point in your life that you really understand mm -hmm. the magnitude of it and the culture behind it and, you know, how it's like such an important fabric of who you are. Right. So, um, you know, that's why I was out in the last couple of weeks. And um, I actually was going to be on the show last week, but I really wasn't feeling it. And, you know... It's hard to record the show and be like kind of, you know, dead inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah it doesn't work that way. It doesn't, it doesn't work, that, work way. that way. No. But um but yeah, um I can't say I'm um in a better place because I th I think when people pass away, it, it's going to be it's actually 3 weeks today. Yeah. Um, yeah. cuz she passed away on a Friday and um I, I think when people pass away, the first couple of days or like the first week, it's kind of like surreal because, you know. Yeah, it, it, you're still dealing with the with, with the whole event. Right, between, it, it, not that this is a joking matter, <laughs> but like after she passed away, um, she passed away on a Friday. Her services were uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And um, it, it's funny because we were saying, this feels like the time between Christmas and New Year's. like Where time doesn't really mean anything. Like, what day is it? Yeah. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, what's going on? Like, you know, um, but the first couple of weeks or the first few days, you're kind of, it's kind of surreal. But I think it's like on the second week that it really starts to hit you. Right, because right. especially when you're really close to someone, it's like, oh, like. This person's not here. Like, I can't tell you how many times just the other day on father's day that i was at my parents house right. and i wanted to barge in her room and be like angela right, and right. you know lie in bed with her and watch tv like we always yeah. did since i was a little kid and and that it's instinctual at this point so it's kind of like or like when i call my mom you know when i i i yeah, I, yeah. I call my mom every single morning um i my would first ask. question would always be like how is mima Cómo right. está mima, cómo pasó la, cómo se pasó la noche, eh, cómo, sí, cómo amaneció, cómo, cómo, cómo amaneció. Right, right, My right. first question. So now it's kind of like, yeah, so, but yeah. you know, it's a process. We all know it's a process, but you know, um, it, it's hard. But um, I have to keep reminding myself that um, you know she had a, a very good long life, and um, and you know, I always grew up with these stories that like. When I was born, you know, they didn't let her go into like the room where my mom was giving birth. So she was like knocking down on the door because <laughs> she wanted to be with my mom because she wanted to be with, you know, it, see it, me it, be like, with like me. in the birth. So, you know, I saw it from the point of view that, you know, she was there when I came into this world and I was there holding her hand when she left. It. And, um, you know, it's, it was very hard. It's very, very hard to go through that. But I think it gives you a certain amount of peace and closure. And mm -hmm. that's all I'm going to talk about the subject <laughs> because... I don't want to turn this into a whole, you know, right. fiasco. But anyway, well, uh, okay, now that we got that out, of the, way, that out of the way, um, yeah. well, we can't talk about this week without talking about what happened yesterday yeah. Um, yeah. with the collapse. In I like South that we're, we're not even trying to be uplifting at this point, are we? Yeah, no, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> 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 Well, happy Friday, everyone. Happy, Friday. happy. How is that commute to work? You know, <laughs> but, uh, I, I don't. We're not going to talk about like a social. Like, is anybody going to happy hour? Right, it's like, like, you know, no, gloom no. and doom. Um, just awful. That's horrible. Yeah, for for those who who may not know what we're talking about. Um, yes, actually, yeah, it was because it was from Yesterday, it was in, into Thursday because it was in the wee morning hours. It was like at one thirty, two yeah. o'clock in the morning. Um, a portion of a large building. I don't know how many stories. Um, twelve stories, and it was over like seventy percent of the building. Yeah, just crumbled in Surfside, which is an area of Miami Beach. Yes, and it's just. I mean, have you seen the surveillance footage I from the building seen, next door? I it have. looks like a planned demolition almost. It's, do you it's know, crazy. Do you know what I thought was really awful in that um, surveillance video is that you see the apartments had the lights on. Yeah. You see the lights kind of fall and then, you know, yeah. dim. I mean... <sighs> I think at, at last count, what is it? They were at 99 mm -hmm. at, uh, people? That's going to go much higher. Well, the, the 99 that were unaccounted for. Right. But that's going to yeah, go higher. Yeah. Because the thing is that um, there's a lot of snowbirds there. And then they didn't keep a log of who was there. They kept a log of the guests. You know, I was oh, thinking about okay. it today. 
you know, for many years I lived in a high rise in downtown and you it know, was more than 12 stories. It was 48 floors. <laughs> I lived on the 48th floor. Amazing. Not going to lie. The view was fantastic. Uh, amazing. Oh, the pool. There, there's no better way to experience ultra than from the balcony of that 48th yep, floor. Yep. <laughs> and new years and all that. Um, and it's funny cause while living there, I always like thought in my mind, Oh my God, what about it? There, there's a fire. Okay. This is my plan. I'm going to go. Yeah, down you're, 48 you, yes. lights. You are Mr. Find All the Exits yes. whenever we walk yes. into a store. Yes, like, I, yeah. I am. I know. I, I just don't <laughs> externalize it. But anywhere I go, anywhere, it's just yeah. it's just second nature. I always look up to see where the exits are. Because I always find an exit that is not the entrance. Because right. Because every to time avoid, there's an emergency, avoid. everybody goes to the entrance. Right. Or where they came in through. Right. It's, right. it's nature. Yeah. Um, like, I always have, like, in my mind, okay, if there's a power outage, this is what we do. If there's a fire, this is, you know, where I go. If there's a flood, you know, downstairs, how do we right. get out of the... Like, all these things. Never in a million years did, did I ever think when what I lived in a What if the rise, building collapses? What about if the building collapses? Well, because I don't really think there's much you can prepare for. If you're on the 48th floor, uh, there's not much no, you can do. but I mean, do. in this case, I mean, there, there's people missing from the second floor. No, right, right, right. No, no. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. I meant, I meant at your building. Yeah, on the um... I mean, do they, this, do they know what? No, I mean, obviously, it's still no, fresh. They haven't been able to no. do anything. But do they have like any? No. I've heard so many different stories. I've heard a pipe burst. I've heard. No, um, but it, but it, but the thing is that, that I've, building, I've heard that they were the building had not passed inspection. Then no sé qué cosa that they were redoing the roof and there was too much weight on. The, I've heard that's something. I've heard like a hundred different stories. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean. Aside from podcasts, hosts, and right. uh, chicken wing uh, connoisseurs, uh, entrepreneurs, <laughs> we're, we're, I mean. We're, we're not engineers. We're not civil engineers. No. We're not. Uh, but um, that's going to come down to structural. I mean, structural yeah, something. To. Somebody, some throughout the years, something was eroding and something was cracking that they didn't know about. Uh, something. Uh, yeah. Because something doesn't collapse in the magnitude that well, that did the way that that collapsed it's actually called pancaking yes it's i mean which that, that makes says it all it even harder that says everything people yeah um that's not ooh, an oops right no 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 I, like, I, un pedazo de techo, right know? yeah um that is uh clearly a major catastrophic yeah um no i'm and kudos to the first responders. Of course, the you know, first they, responders. Um, and um, I've, I've seen video posted on. We're IG. gonna be posting here in our socials um, in the next couple of days. Uh, any charity or well, any... yeah, we actually already did that. Um, today, this, yeah, today, yeah, well, yesterday, yesterday, actually, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's the, I was I was actually gonna read. It, I just found it. It's um, neighbors for neighbors, which is actually I believe it's through our local CBS affiliate, uh, WFOR. That's their organization. Yes, uh, neighborsfornneighbors.org uh, slash Surfside Fund. So you know the whole goal of that is that they're gonna assist victims in the long term with any costs and things not covered. You know that's now that I just read that it reminded me of you're watching the news and you're seeing there was this one guy who he's Haitian. His family was in Haiti during the earthquake and all that. He was not, but he went out and basically just bought like a whole bunch of pizza to take mm -hmm. to the the center where, yeah. where to the first responders to the people who had been evacuated because all that area, all those people who live in that building, they can't go back. They can't go home. They can't go home. And he was like, you know what? I know that when it happened, my family was helped by others. And you know what? There's not much I can do, but I can go out and buy them food. Right. You know, right. I can come and give them a meal. You know, and um, that's the thing about tragedies is that tragedies have a really twisted way of right. building a sense of community and of getting people together and it's everybody sad in a way. putting away their, you know, petty Different shit to, yeah. uh, to one side and, and working together. So... You know, um, it's just a, a terrible tragedy. I mean, there's not really much more we could say. Just a terrible, terrible tragedy. And, you know, our hearts go out to all and the people who perished and their families. Because, yeah. uh, you know, there's nothing worse than not knowing. Uh, yeah. Not knowing. And, yeah. um, and, you know, our hearts go out to, yeah, the, the victims and the families and to... You know the first responders and, thank, and to thank, everybody who's, thank all of who's you, man. working because I mean this is this is one of these. It, it, it's it's not that it's similar to nine eleven, but like I remember when the World Trade Center fell. It's like where do you even do you start? start? Like where do you start? no, they've had to go in through the garage. Yeah, in this case, it's like wh like where do you start? Like do you start picking up debris? Like 
I right. can't even imagine, nor do I want to, the complexity behind that plan. Not planning. to mention you're dealing... You're in a structure that is not sound. Right, because the rest of the structure may fall too. Like On, While you're trying to yeah. do your job. So. like you, It takes a special person. Anyway... So again, our hearts with the victim and the family, and and you know, and the first responders and everybody. So you know, hopefully, hopefully they could find some more survivors there. Yeah. Um. So I guess now in like our regular topics, <laughs> since we had can these, we transition? These a were bit? a few PSAs. So I want to talk about Britney Spears. I feel we have to. But before we talk about Britney Spears, okay. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Stephanie and David for being gracious enough yes. to fill in for me like last minute. And, um, you know, they, they are, they're great friends of ours, but, yeah. you know. I now know what it's like to be a producer on live with like Regis and Kathy Lee. <laughs> where, where like, you know, all of, a, all of a sudden, you know, when I'm sick and calls like, yes. like you know, right yes. before which, and it's by live. The way, which, by the way, especially in the show with, with Stephanie, I, I hadn't had a chance to tell either of you. But both of you did a fantastic job on keeping to like points to script <laughs> because I know that sometimes, especially when it's just you and Stephanie, yes, yes, that train can go off the rails. That can go off the rails worse than an Amtrak. And we don't know where we're gonna <laughs> yeah, land. Yeah. Um. But you guys were like, boom, boom. I had boom, a list. Boom, I, boom. I had a list. We've had a list before, That's and true. it hasn't worked. That's true. That's <laughs> I'll true. never forget the time that it was. I don't think it. I think it was the second time we recorded with like all of them. Yeah, yeah. That I'm like, can we talk about collusion? Like, I want to talk. <laughs> this was back. With the Mueller report, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, can we talk? Can we, like every five minutes, I'm like, can we talk about the damn Collu- Mueller report? Collusion was like Matt Damon on yes. Jimmy Kimmel. Yes, <laughs> um, but you guys did a fantastic job. So again, thank you, Stephanie and David, for filling in. Um, you know, your friends not in the good times, but in the bad times. So again, thank sure. you. Um, so I want to talk. You know, since I've been out, but I was listening. I want to talk about the whole the in the Heights debacle. Okay, week so, number three. So no, to our listeners, <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're going to get this conversation for the third week. But, you know, this is an ongoing conversation. It this is, is not a, Nothing, you know, one and done. This is not an issue that just is going to go away. Go away. Um, so here, here's the thing. And I saw the movie. You and I actually saw it on, yeah, on the, yeah, same, on the day. same day. You saw it on the movie theater. I saw it on HBO Max. Yeah. I actually technically saw it before you did. Whatever. Which is which is quite incredible. Well, it's a musical. <laughs> That's true. And I don't do musicals. <laughs> That's true. You right? don't. So uh, it's funny because Tristan was watching a piece of it. And he's like, "Why are they singing so much? And why don't the songs end?" And I'm like, "Exactly why I've never warmed up to musicals." Uh, whatever. <laughs> I wish life was a musical. <laughs> anyway, so look, Lin Manuel Miranda. I give him all the credit in the world because, as I think you said, he's the one out there telling our stories. Yeah. So, you know, him and like Gloria Calderon, uh, Calderon Kelly, Kelly. you know, the weight of the entire Latino, Latino experience in all shapes and colors and broad spectrum. It's on these two people. It's on these two people's shoulders, specifically in this case, Lin Manuel Miranda. Yeah. So, there's things that you're going to overlook, there's things that you're going to get wrong. Not that those things should not be addressed, but I, I think to vilify him right. in this specific situation. It's it counterproductive. Is wrong. Is wrong it's counterproductive. Two things can be true, right? You can say kudos to Lin Mar- Ma- Manuel Miranda for doing this movie, for it being a great movie, because right. the movie is critically acclaimed. It was so. It was. Oh my god! I've seen like it has like a ninety some percentage on Rotten Tomatoes. Or, I've already seen it three times. It's right. Good. It's wonderful. It, it's critically acclaimed. So, it, you know, aside from that, it's a good movie. Right. right. It's well done. It's a good it's, movie. Right. You know, somebody like me who's not into musicals can kind of follow along. Right. You right. know, because there is dialogue and it's very like colorful and like fast, you know, like moving and whatever. Um, so, which by the way, I saw that I think a couple of days after my grandmother yeah, passed. Yeah, I was okay. I didn't know you were watching it that day, and I was literally I was like, I need to tell Darian to not watch this yes. movie as soon as I get out of this theater. Yes, well, too late. <laughs> yes, and that I when she when she and it's funny because when she was singing that again, I had I had never seen in the Heights. Right, I didn't know what it was about. Right, so I didn't know what happens. What, right, to right, her. right, right. Then I'm like, do I have some more? And I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I'm not like emotionally stable for this right nope, now. Nope, nope, nope. Which, by the way, I think that her song Paciencia is like the Fe. showstopper. Yeah. Paciencia Fe is, is a beautiful song. Yeah, right? I mean, and it's her, her, incredible. her performance, just everything. Yeah. But anyway, so which this is what you actually said that Wilson Cruz 
tweeted about that if there was more projects one of the good things to come out of this Wilson Cruz now follows us <laughs> um, and we've loved Wilson Cruz for since my a long life, time yeah. so it's been a bit um, you know it, and it's true if there would be a, a, a higher variety of Latin um, movies projects. and projects of all types then there will be more of a space for different of different you know different people within the latin umbrella different representation to, to say right and it'll be more inclusive because right. everybody will have a share you know their fair share of the table right. you know on, on the table um in terms of the you know the stories being told right because it's true you know an argentinian a white argentinian is technically latino their experience is very different than somebody who's afro latino and dominican right. or cuban right. or whatever it's a completely different story. And you can't expect them to acknowledge someone else's experience that they just don't understand. Right. So when you have a project by una pila de argentino, chilenos that are all European Blonde, descent, yeah, yeah. you can't be like, well, this is representative of, you know, indigenous people from Central right. America or <laughs> right, from, right, you know, right. indigenous backgrounds or, you know, Afro, Latin. I mean, it's not. Because right. again, we are not a monolith, right? So I think two things can be true at once. The movie was great. It was advancement in terms of that it was predominantly a Latin um, a no, cast. I mean, with the exception of Benny in terms of the main cast. Benny right. was the only non-Latino. That it was, it was done by Lin Manuel Miranda. So you, all the accolades to the movie can be true. Right. But at the same time... We still have work to do. Be critical at the fact that, yes, there was a lack of representation of Afro-Latino in the movie. Because... Here's the thing. If he were to... If the movie would have been something... Had a in Kendall? Name, if it was it in Kendall? Have, even if it would have been in New York. <laughs> right. A random... Chelsea. You know, whatever, New York. Yeah. Or like any Latin... Okay, I, 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 Latin I'm, I'm thinking... I, what's Jack Jackson Heights. Or, or, or if like we made it up. You yeah, know? yeah. Oh, oh, right. A new place. Right. Whatever. right. It would have been fine. But... This He's is a movie it. about Washington Heights. Right. And Washington Heights is predominantly Dominican. Yes. And Dominicans, yes, there's a lot of white Dominicans. One of my best friends is He's a white Dominican. A white Dominican. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Right? But you know what? Within his family, there's all colors of people. Right. It's just that I think that he came out on the lighter shade. But right. he has aunts and uncles that are more Afro-Latino. Right. So I think that the criticism is valid that if you are making a movie about a certain area. this specific enclave, mm -hmm. yes, you, looking back on it, yes, you should have casted people that are more representative in their skin tone to the people that actually live there. And I think also, which is, this is really what I wanted to talk about, okay. which is the issue of colorism within the Hispanic community, mm -hmm. you know, the Latin community. I don't know why there's people, I don't know if maybe this is like, when I mean Americans, I mean both African Americans and you know white Americans, okay, you know black okay. Ameri black and white Americans. That for some reason, I don't know if they were under the impression that there was no racism within the Latin community. South like, of the border, <laughs> right? Because when I hear them talk about this now, oh my gosh! Because do you know that there's racism in the Latin community? I'm like, no shit! Like whoever thought that there wasn't? Yeah, like, what, what utopia did you think happens like, in the southern hemisphere? Thought there wasn't, and. Colorism within the Latin community is definitely a huge issue. And I'll present this to you. Okay? okay. What did we grow up in? Grow up watching with our parents and our abuelas? Novelas. Right. We have seen a lot of novelas. A lot. Yeah. Can you name me a single telenovela okay. where the leads were Afro-Latina or Latino? Nope. The only ones that immediately sprang to mind was uh, Corazón. Right. Okay. Actually, I was going Corazón there. Corazón and going el there. padre. Wait, 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 wait. I was going there. I was going there. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Right. okay. I'm gonna get there in a minute. Okay. 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 Here. Lead, one. Lead, one. One. Lead. One. One. I'll take you one more. I can't tell you a black, quote unquote, black Latina actress from that from that época. Right. So we're talking here about telenovelas, which is one of the most. It's the main export of, 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 of Latin America. Yeah. Something that when you specifically think Mexico, the, Mexico, and Venezuela. Yeah. And um, when you think Venezuela, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Latin America, you think telenovela. Absolutely, That's yeah. like the yeah. shtick, right? And, and coño, not everybody's, everybody's white. 
Yeah, everybody, everybody's like by uh, fair right? skin. The, the only, they, there's not even any indigenous looking people. No, no, very few. And then, and then the ones that are indigenous looking or from an indigenous background, they play indigenous characters. Right, right, right. And then you know, we love Talia. We love Talia. <laughs> Listen, I've been groped by Talia. Okay, yeah, we but, love you know, Talia. Talia with her fair skin and her <laughs> flowing. As much you know, as she loves Mexico, and there's you know, nobody who rides harder for Mexico you know, than Talia. And her flowing straight blonde hair, right. or blondish hair, is not you know, the epitome of. I mean, she look. She's represented because there are there are Latins. That, a lot of Latins that right. look like her. But 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 she is the queen of telenovelas, and that's what I'm trying to say. Right. That she is. Fair skin, you know, light hair, you know, right. fair complexity, you know, uh, European centric and European features, right, right? Right. And now that you said corazón, let's think of the uh, uh, Talia's three biggest soap operas: Maria Mercedes, Marimar, sí, and Maria, Maria del Barrio. Barrio. I think it was a Marimar that she had Corazón. Yes, yes. Corazón, who was uh, black, she was actually Cuban, <laughs> Afro Latina. Corazón. Yeah. Corazón practically played a mammy. On oh, Talia's she did. soap opera from the 1990s. That show was like, what, 95? <laughs> and she was, yeah, she, she by, was practically a mammy. Lo que le faltaba era ponerse en una silla uh, with Tom. Right. You know, and pull right. up the Right, the, and, the, and, the and all the characters that were, like, Afro-Latino, they were, like, dumbed down. They were simpletons. I mean, and you're talking about, like, the 90s. The 1990s. <laughs> yeah. And these were soap operas that were hits around the world. Right. Because I think Marimar was translated into, like... Marimar is still played. Marimar was translated into more languages that I even knew existed. Like, but it's like the Bible and Marimar. Yes. <laughs> that's a, yeah. And and that's a problem. Yeah. Like that is a problem. So when you hear people that are Afro-Latino saying, hey, you know, this movie didn't represent us. I don't think it's so much. I think the movie was like the collateral damage, if you will, of because the it was high problem, profile. Yeah. Right? It's like, hey, we exist and nothing. Nothing represents us because it's true. Like, uh, what? Like, like I was actually thinking about this. I'm, I'm like, yeah. nothing. Like, nothing. 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 And if they are, I mean, it's very racist because, again, going back to soap operas, even the people that look indigenous, like more like of an indigenous mm. background, in soap operas they play like indigenous people. Lo that, sibiente, lo, you know, yeah, yeah, they're, they're yeah, like, yeah, right. Los sibiente that you know wear like you know like very stereotypical, right, like right. negative stereotypes um, of what an indigenous servant is supposed to look like. Well, I mean, the, the character La India Maria. Yeah, here she's the she's the the, the star of her own series and, and her I, own and movie. I realize that and these, and these are cultural kind of like touchstones if you will and and you know for a very long time people didn't really think about it but when you really stop and analyze the right. issue with colorism right. in the latin it community is there, my it, it is it is very alarming and it, it's it's very it, it, again it's one of these things that when people are telling you it's a problem listen. you need to listen and you know one of one of the people who's been very vocal about this who was one of my favorite people in the world Gina Torres you know, Gina Torres is always talking about how in all the roles that she plays, she's has to present like African American. Right. Because they don't know what to do with her. They don't otherwise. know what to do with her. What do you mean you're Latina? Right. And right. and it's funny because in Suits, which oh by the way, is my favorite show. Uh, well, <laughs> two weeks without mentioning it, so we're back. Um in suits next segment, the view. <laughs> in in suits in the spinoff she got Pearson she kind of started introducing uh, a little bit more of her background because you didn't really get her background in, in suits, suits no not really um, and then in the show she's in now Reno no uh, no uh, not Reno now uh, <laughs> and Lone Star now Lone Star nine, nine one one, one, one. Star, huh? that she plays a character of uh, Tommy Vega. Mm -hmm. She, what I like is that she's she's Afro Latina, but th th there's not like an episode where it's like, oh, by the way, I'm Afro Latina. Like she'll call her <laughs> kids and be like, chiquita, ven acá. You know, like how one really. Speaks. Okay, so it's like when we were, when we had the the chat with Ana Villafañe, where she's yeah. like, I'm not just gonna go in there and be like, you know, oh, can I have a cafe? Right. You know, it's it, right. So so it's definitely an issue that. Um, I mean, obviously, he's been going on for centuries. But, you know, in terms of representation, too often we say, oh, the representation matters, representation matters. But then when the moment comes, 
we leave people out of it. And if you leave people out of it, whether intentionally or unintentionally, then the representation it. is not what I, I, it's what you tried to the what you fair. tried to go out and do was not achieved. That's fair, but I think you know, like we like I said last week, and you've you reiterated. You know, unfortunately, you you can't be all things to all people all the time. You know what I mean? And and should absolutely, I think there should be. But you know, sometimes, and in, and in the case of in the heights, I don't think, and I mean, I don't know him. Unfortunately, I wish I did. I don't think Lin Manuel Miranda, like you know, stayed up all night one day and was just right. like, and, and, like I'm going to purposely exclude Afro Latinos, right? right? And, and, and so it's 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 just it's disheartening. Let me ask you something because this I didn't know because I'd have been wanting to ask somebody who knew about this. When the show was on Broadway, what color were the actors? Well, he was the lead. Oh, Lin Manuel was the lead, but at one point his replacement was so uh, the character was Navi was played by Corbin Blue. Really? Yeah. Is Corbin blue Latin? No, no. But he's no. But, I mean, he, but he's black. Um, yeah. And Corbin yeah. blue could look Dominican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corbin blue could look Dominican. That's why I asked. I'm like, oh, you know. Maybe. Yeah. But it's but it's one of those things where um, he he. My understanding is he probably did something similar, as in with Hamilton, where right. it's just like I'm just going to. I mean, look, colorblind cast as you will. Ca- casting a movie. I mean, not that. There's a million a, factors a, to begin right, with. Now that we've been through a casting process, right? There's a million factors. There's studios. There's money. There's it's who showed up. Complex. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that when people bring this up or brought this up for the movie, you can't be dismissive about it. No, but it but it is disheartening that you know it's like I told you I'm like this is why we can't have nice things because it's you know you, you it's like can, can we get, I I agree, I get it I agree I understand but can we please celebrate for a moment? You know what yeah, I mean? Because yeah, no, I understand what you're we, saying. Because we it. get these opportunities so few and far between. I that understand it's, what you're it's, saying. It saddens it. me. I understand what you're saying. It, but I'm going to say a word that tri- may trigger you. But you also come from a place of privilege. Ugh, that word, but I guess. but it's true. But yes, but it's true. You're Latin, but you're white. So when these sto- when they get told, they're usually through my lens, right? And people that look like you, right? Like one day at a time. Like one day at a time. Exactly. The ring makeup one day at a time. And, and mira, look, even one day at a time. I remember when one day at a time came out and Gloria Calderon Caller, who we've had on the show, who is Cuban and is a, the producer and writer of the show. Yeah. So it was coming from a Cuban voice. There were a lot of people pissed off that they didn't hire Cuban actors. Right, right, right. right. Never right. mind that we got an EGOT. So we're not even talking <laughs> now about color. We're talking now about like... Culture. Co- like nationality, you know. Right, right. It's like, well, what do you mean to hire a Cuban per-? You know, so I understand that, you know, there, there, there's always people that are going to be very sensitive about certain things. Mm-hmm. But but the whole thing with colorism is such a real and, and, and such a real and substantial problem that has always existed that again when you have a movie like in the heights that's so high profile that right. it's carrying it shouldn't but carrying this huge the load, weight of all the latino community you know people are gonna be like shit but that doesn't look like what it's supposed to look like so but bueno yeah that's it the third week about in the heights that's it that's it that's so it. this is the hat trick yes okay Unless- Something else happens. Unless God that, forbid something else happens next week and we, yeah. we trot it out again. So are we now talking about Britney? <laughs> well, I mean... What it is right now? Yeah, you know. I mean, I'm up against a speaker trying to take on the music. It's like a competition. Me again to beat, I want to get in the zone. I want to get in the zone. So let's anyway, get in the zone. <laughs> so to our listeners out there um, who don't know what happened with Britney Spears this week. So uh, as many of you know, Britney Spears has been in a conservatorship for 13 years. I think that's longer than Susan Lucci went without an Emmy. <laughs> I think it's funny that's what you thought about. <laughs> um, so many other things you could have thought about. Um, she's been in a conservatorship for 13 years. And what that means is that her father and uh, a financial team are in charge of her life. Her life. And when I mean her life, I mean as we her learned finances, <laughs> finances, all, well, actually, all her finances to where she goes and who she sees and what she does yep. and if she can have a family or not. And yeah, that, um, that, for years, fun. Brittany has been saying that uh, she wants to get out of this, but we had never actually heard her speak on the right. subject. And, um, you know, she had never given an interview about this. Well, I don't think she's allowed. 
Right, she's not I mean, allowed. <laughs> she, she's not. Her Instagram, you could tell, is not completely controlled by her. Um, but I feel like she has input in her Instagram. She has input, but I'm sure. But right, but do you think that if her her Instagram, if she were to say what she said this week, they would oh, have right, her right, post right, it? right, no. right, right, right. Um, she has to stay in her lane. Right, right, right. right? Um, so we had never really heard from her perspective. We kind of had figured out what it was. Right. And now those free Britney people that everybody thought were crazy all Not of a sudden so don't seem so crazy anymore. So this week there was a court hearing regarding her conservatorship yeah. and the judge let her speak in a court. Well, it was through Zoom, but That's how we speak. do everything now. And she spoke for more than 20 minutes. Yeah, it, was, I, it was 23 I, minutes. And she said her whole truth. And I have to tell you that I I read the transcript um, Wednesday night. And mm-hmm. I, it so troubled me. It, it really, really troubled me. And then on Thursday, I actually listened to the whole 20-some minute like 23, yeah. um, you know, um, mm-hmm. argument that she made. And I just... My heart breaks for her. It really does. Yeah. And, and, you know, I... A lot of times we get really hung up about celebrities and we're like shit we don't know these people like why are we so, right, we so invested? interested invested yeah. in these people and it's like they don't pay they don't pay my my <laughs> shit like but just to see somebody who has had her ups and downs like we all do and um somebody who has been so successful and yet really has nothing at this point so nothing she can call her own yeah so it's it was it was very uh if you've only read the transcript, I, I kind of implore you to listen to the recording because it's 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 Britney. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those things where it's like she starts off and obviously it's a prepared statement because in a situation like that, I think everybody would have a prepared statement, quite frankly. But it there's there's almost a certain I've, I've always said this. I've loved Britney forever, as you all may know by now. And I've always said that part of it is like I feel a little like protective of her. Like even back then it was like, you know, she seemed like the younger sister type situation. You know what I mean? And listening to her, especially when she began speaking, that they had to tell her like twice to to please slow down because the court stenographer could not, mm-hmm. um, you know, get her stuff. And she just sounded so... This is, bit odd. this is the first time she was able to talk like, about she's it. Like, she's like, let me get it out. Let me get it out before they tell me to stop. Before they tell me, you know, I have to... The call's ended or whatever. And there was there was a certain... For lack of a better word, I guess, innocence in the way she was presenting herself. Because you could tell she was excited. She was nervous. She was... You know, she's like, I want to be honest, but how... You know, what what's going to happen? Like, you could tell there was just so much going through her head at that moment. I think what they're doing to her is like a form of modern day slavery. And, you know, the fact that she... I love that she says she's like, I'm not going to work. You know you know what's so on. interesting? That now there's certain things that she said that kind of you look at, it, look at it in retrospect. Right. And you're like... Because I remember, I think you and I discussed this. When she finished her Vegas residency, then, then she immediately went on tour. Yeah. I, well, we, I went to that tour. Yeah. That and, now like, I feel, and now I feel bad for going on that tour. Yeah. Let me, I legitimately, as I heard that what she was explaining, that they forced her to go on that tour. They I was like, forced her was to like, go on tour. Oh, that was my birthday present. I feel so bad. That they forced her to go on tour. There was a time that she had to the perform. Same and she had a fever of like 104. Four, and she yeah. had to perform. They, you know, regarding her personal life, they have to, um, they put an IUD on her so she wouldn't get she can get pregnant so like they're making decisions for her and and uh, you know what to do with her body you know you want to talk about a woman's choice and and i have to tell you that i i i'm not an expert in conservatorship like that's not an area of law i really know about conservatorships and civil engineer not things we know about but she sounds she rambled on a bit, but I realized that she was right reading. Right. Because she had written all this down. Yeah. She was very nervous. Yeah, you could she tell. She had never spoken about this. So she was trying to pack in the <laughs> yeah, most Yeah, that's what I'm she saying. Could. She's like, before they pull the cord on but this. But she sounded very coherent. Yeah. No, she she wasn't like talking nonsense. No. She sounded very coherent. And then also, you know, before I went into <laughs> law, I actually was a psych major and I, right. I I worked at a few facilities and I dealt with people with like schizophrenia and stuff que like that. Mal. Que estaba mal. And even people like that don't enter conservatorships. Well, but they're also not worth millions of dollars. 
Right, but, <laughs> right, but from a legal standpoint, you shouldn't be seeing the money. No, no, no. Right, but I'm saying, it, but maybe it, they don't have somebody to step the, in the because there's is no. That they can't handle their business, their their financial affairs. Whether you're worth, no, no, you know, know ten thousand dollars or ten million dollars. Right. Um, but even people with like schizophrenia, with like the worst episodes of mania, don't aren't put in conservatorships right. for that long. For that long. And, and she has been, which a lot of people, uh, are just people that know about this, like mm-hmm. attorneys that right. know about this, don't know how they're doing this. And I have to tell you that I, I my mind, I, I'm telling you, I may be a guy, but I'm like the world's biggest like feminist. I think our listeners know that by now. There, I, I always think like, what about if it was a guy? And to me, would this be done to Justin to me, Bieber? The fact that not only that she's a woman, but that you know she's always had that sort of like blonde kind of I don't want to say bimbo, but kind of like girly image about Happy go her. Lucky. <coughs> Excuse me, you know that kind of like, like the, I don't, that quote unquote California blonde, right? Although she's from Louisiana, Louisiana but still, um, you know, kind of like. Don't take seriously type right, right. girl, right? right? I wonder, and I know that sounds very rudimentary, you know, especially with such a serious court right. proceedings, if that has anything to do with her treatment. Because I feel that the problem with Britney Spears is that people don't take her seriously. And Nobody's going to try this on And pink. honestly, I don't think Britney Spears is any more or less crazy than a lot of the celebrities out there. Right? That's true. She's not. I mean, are you going to tell me that any of like, sorry, Stephanie, the women on the real world, uh, on the housewives, on the housewives are more stable than Britney Spears? That should be all, that should be the next fucking franchise. Like, the Real you, Housewives do, of Conservatorship. Do, do you remember in the early two thousands this British singer called Pete Doherty? Oh yeah, that he used to like stumble out of like yeah, he was always high, and then he was like a manic depressive and all that. He stuff. was like the male Amy Winehouse, yes, and like nobody put him in a conservatorship, and he was rich, yeah, like nobody or, put Amy in one or, or all these like other people. I, I don't think she's any more more or less than fun- dysfunctional than the average person that you know maybe has a few problems that they need to work. I on. I mean, and, and and you know, I think the only difference is obviously that she's maybe a little as as nuts as you or I, but she has the money to make it a little dangerous sometimes, maybe. Right, but you know but, what? Uh, no, no, but I'm saying that's that's the only difference is right. what I'm saying. But like, you know it's... what? Whether she s- invests her money or whether she spends it all on, <laughs> you know, whatever. It's her money. It's she her life. has earned that money. She's Not only has she earned that money, but you know what? Let her make the mistakes that everybody else makes. Yeah. Then she and... can go be the third member of TLC. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Well, because, you know, they're down one member and they made all the financial mistakes. So, you know. <laughs> Well, but the one who kept a tab on that. That's true. The one who could do math was Lisa. Was, that was one of the best behind the music. It was. This is a way that a group can sell 30 million albums and be broke. <laughs> Fuck you, Pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but I I often think about that a lot. You know, if if mm-hmm. part of it, not all of it, if part of it is, you know, people don't take her seriously. And, you know, and for some time... Well, that was never funny, but when you're young, it's cute. It's kind of like whatever. But now, you know, she's going to be 40 be this 40 year. This December, yeah. She's a mother of two and like coño, give her the credit that is long overdue. And 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 you know, that whole thing that she has to submit herself to all these these examinations for her to see her kids. Yeah, well, yeah, and she goes to the therapist like no, by, I, there are people in psych there's, wards there's who don't go to therapy that there, much. There's something there I know, I know. Something doesn't add up. Something doesn't add up. Doesn't add up. There, there's so, because again, everybody talks about this 2008 medical report that the judge saw, right? Okay. Okay. So, what does a medical report have? What's the one of the worst mental illnesses she could have? Schizophrenia, right? Like, oh, you know, the one of the most severe forms of schizophrenia. Again, people that are schizophrenic are not in conservators conservatorship. They're medicated and they move on. So, and like, she's saying she's taking her pills, right? And again, she sounds coherent. And another thing, another thing, which we've talked about this before, all these 
Vegas residencies tours that she's done, mm-hmm. she's always fulfilled her her. Um, That's true. They never canceled the show. All, all of them. They, she has fulfilled every single one of her professional engagements at the same so, level of, so, of professionalism. Right. So yeah. it's not a case when oh my god she had to do twenty shows and she stumbled. You know. Right. And, right. Right. And right. 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 No. no. She showed up and she, she showed up. She showed up. She was extremely professional. So she's clearly capable of working. Right. You know. So like, I, I mean, I'm telling you that. I think, you know, what everybody's thinking is what you don't want to think or say that, you know, like that this reaches a point where she attempts against her life. Because then oh, if something, not. God forbid, were to happen to her, sale todo el mundo llorando, oh my God, because we tried to help her. I'm like, I'm like, no, it's like, shut up. She's telling you, again, what we said, right. what we were talking about. <laughs> in the know, heights, yeah. In the heights and colorism. When somebody tells you something, listen. you need to listen to them. You know, she is telling you. She's telling you. And if, God forbid, she does her. attempt something, that's just going to be more kindling to keep her in the conservatorship. Yes. So, you know, we really, I I mean, I have to tell you that, yeah, that like after I read, I read the whole transcript, I was like, oh, this put me in such a bad headspace because yeah. it was so extreme. And and it was all very accurate. Very documented. In terms, right. In terms of the timeline. Because yeah, anybody yeah. who's followed her career will be like, oh, I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. And oh, now, this. And now oh, it that. makes sense. Why? Don't you remember that for the premiere of, um, what was the second? Domination. Domination. That she just came out. She waved and she walked right away. Because she, she. was like, bitch, I ain't doing the show. <laughs> she had had it. My obligation is to show up. I showed up. So I just, you know, I can't wait for her to, to be out of the conservatorship. And then, you know, you're going to get that video of her like walking out of her mansion. You know, she's going to do one of her little spins and then she's going to have a perfume bottle and it's going to be like conservatorship fantasy. Find your liberation. <laughs> <laughs> I found mine. <laughs> Only at Macy's. Only at Macy's. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, 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 we, no, no, no. We haven't had a fantasy perfume in a while. No, no. <laughs> And if you act out, you can get the fantasy <laughs> gift box with the cream that you're never going to use. <laughs> Nobody ever uses the cream. And there's always so much of it. No, I love when I go buy like cologne or something, and, you know, and they're like, oh, why don't you get the gift box? It brings a soap, a deodorant, and a cream. I'm like, which I will I don't never use. use any of those things. It's going to be yeah. under my vanity. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then I don't want to throw it away because it's like a brand. You know, it's like yes. Calvin Klein Eternity. Right. And you're like, it's like, well, I mean, I don't want to throw it away. So it sits there and I'm like, but I'm not going to put like, it on. The, out of those things, the one I might use the soap like because if i run out of soap then yeah. i have but it, like but, the deodorants yeah. because those deodorants mm, you smell like eternity mm, you smell for like 10 minutes water for 10 minutes but that doesn't have it's not ph balance at all for man or, or woman or have an antiperspirant <laughs> at so, all you go to the gym you got, so you yeah done. i got out there so <sighs> anyway okay so i have to tell you about something that we've talked about here on the podcast first oh, of all i have to say i love our, our guest host but i missed you <laughs> i missed me too <laughs> um also, well, before I get into what I want to talk about, kudos to whoever came up with that <laughs> meme that uh, became sort of viral this week about the whole thing that if you're in Miami and you're buying mangoes, you, oh, have, you no have no friends. friends. I yeah. said what I said. I mean, we've talked about that here in the podcast. None of that sentence is a lie. Did you see the mangoes I have downstairs? No, I didn't. Can I have some? Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't buy yeah. those mangoes. I haven't paid for mangoes. I went to my aunt's house in Hialeah a, a few days ago, and she's like, mijo, lleva de mango. And then I'm like, no, I'll take two or three. And when I look, she had like four barrels of mango. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Bring out the Serrano's bags. Because- I, I feel like here, people with mangoes, it's like when people are, it's like, you know, I don't pay for sex. I don't pay for mangoes. <laughs> and I have to tell you that. The mangoes in the yellow Sedanos bag make it even more authentic. I think that when it's surrounded by the yellow plastic, I think it keeps the, better it, <laughs> than the Publix one. I think there's something in the dye. Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. Who buys mangoes? And I'm, I'm telling you, what is the, at least in season? Who the buys most mangoes? Miami thing that when I've and, and we've talked about it here several times throughout you know four seasons, the most Miami experience that people don't even think about. Is the whole thing? Tell me, you know, tell me you're from Miami without telling me you're from Miami. I brought that, a bag, uh, of, uh, so a, a bag, bag of mangoes, of mangoes or of avocados. Mm-hmm. Yeah, depends. and it's not the Haas avocados. Hell it's no, the big avocado. We don't play know? that Haas shit. Yeah, actually, I like the Haas ones better, but whatever. <laughs> okay, but it's not like you get more bang for your buck right. in, in the but other one. Uh, but yeah, but they're not the same. You can't make guacamole with the big one. No, but when I walk out the But anyway. It's like, that's such a Miami yeah. thing. You always have that coworker that brings like 20 bags of mangoes and a pasar mangoes in the department. 
¿Viste? ¿Viste que Pilar trajo mango? ¿Viste I mean, todos los mangos I, I, I love that Pilar always brings mangos. Pilar always brings mangos. She's so considerate. So, I wanted to actually talk to you or mention... Um, Ooh, can I interrupt you for a second, though? Yeah. Because we're we're more than halfway through the episode. And I do just want to give a shout out to um, to George from Farmhouse Barbecue. Oh, my God. Yes. Um, for sharing your kitchen with us at yes. Beat Culture. Um, this past week, we, we had our second pop-up at Beat Culture. It was fantastic. We sold out. Um, but just thank you, George, for, for yes. sharing your and kitchen we're, with we're, us. We're it very... Was, we're, uh, First of all, thank you to everybody who came out yes. and is supporting us on our chicken wing venture. Yes, we have one actually... July 2nd, so start your 4th of July weekend off with a bang and chickens. So actually, next Friday. Yeah, it's a week from today. Next yeah. Friday, a week from today, we have our... Third? Our, our third pop-up. Um, <laughs> our, th- our third pop-up on July the 2nd for the 4th of July. Yes. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be back at Union Beer. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody who supported us. Regarding our pop-up this week at uh, Bee Culture, Alan. Yes. You know, Alan, the owner of Bee Culture, is amazing. Thank you so much for yeah, we're, having we're us. Seriously we, considering having you canonized. Yes. We also do trivia there. But George, you know, yeah. I, I have to tell you that I, I was a little bit hesitant because... Bee Culture has its own kitchen. And I know how chefs can be, you know, and cooks can be about their kitchen. So I was like, oh no, I'm going to go cook in somebody else's kitchen. (laughs) Like, I feel like the song lyric. (laughs) I'm going to cook in somebody else's kitchen. Like, I feel this so like wrong. And George couldn't have been more welcoming welcoming and awesome. And he hooked us up and he was just great. And while you were out there doing your thing, you know, getting orders in (laughs) and I was back there cooking, uh, he, you know, he was keeping me company and we were talking and it was great. So again, thank you both Alan and George. It it was a great experience and yes, check us out in our next, uh, this Uh, could, this could be our commercial, but let me tell you, (laughs) um, <laughs> our ad, our, our PSAs. So, anyway, so I wanted to talk to you about something that we've brought up before, but but now with Netflix, it's like taking on a different kind of, I don't know, uh, a different a life. Life. Okay. So remember how I've always told you and listeners, I'm sure. Is this about the Heifer Corporation? No, I'm sure there's some of you out there, or a lot of you out there, who feel my pain. So I have practically given up on network television, especially dramas, because this has been happening to me for years, that I become invested in a show and then it gets canceled. And then it gets canceled in the middle of a cliffhanger. (laughs) Always. Oh, yeah. I was so into, it was called State of Affairs with Catherine Heigl. Oh, yes, yes, Like yes. five, six years ago on NBC. Yeah. That show ended. It only did one season. It ended with her, <laughs> ha- like her in like Afghanistan and the Taliban was on its way and she had to, she had the phone to the president calling the president to get back up. The backup was waiting, but the president didn't get, didn't get the call. I see something, you know, and you could see the Taliban coming in and I'm like, the show ended like that. And I'm like, but how is this? And then the other one was Resurrection on ABC, which Resurrection lasted one, for like like three, like two, three yeah, seasons, yeah. which was one of the little boy who had drowned. And then yeah. he comes back to the, like his parents' house 20 years later. Mm. And then, you know, what upsets me is that these shows get canceled and they end in a cliffhanger. And then as you say, well, but then if you stop watching... That's it's a vicious cycle, right. right? If you don't watch, then it's not gonna happen, right? Okay, so it sucked me in again. <laughs> what sucked you in? So I had noticed uh-huh. that manifest on oh, NBC. Okay. I knew about the show. The show yes. had been around. It was for on a its, it was on its third, third season. season mm-hmm. Had been around for a few years, and I did never watch that show for that very same reason. I'm like, I'm not going to get sucked in because I'm going to start watching the damn show and it's going to get freaking canceled. Bueno. This the last couple of weeks, it was trending top, yep. 10, top 10 on Netflix. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to check it out. <laughs> and I got sucked in. I went down that rabbit hole and now I got canceled. Now, 
And Netflix is it got canceled on NBC. And then they were like, oh, it's performing so well on Netflix. That they were hopeful. <laughs> that they were hopeful that it was going to yeah. be picked up by Netflix. And the show, I haven't seen all the episodes, but Netflix from what said, I read, no, thank you. it ends in Tremendo Cliffhanger. Yeah. And I want to know what happened. I want to know where they went for five and a half years. And I, we'll never know. You will never so know. So I guess what I wanted to talk to you yeah. about. What was this rabbit hole leading me right. towards? So do you think, don't you think <laughs> that there's a way, and if there's TV producers listening out there, well, if there's TV Let producers listening, they should reach out because we can do a talk. That, we could do this five that, days a week. That. There should be a clause in these shows that says that, it, okay, a season is 20 episodes. Okay. Right? But if we cancel you, we're going to give you an additional four episodes to wrap it up. <laughs> I think that if people knew that, they would become more invested because then I'll be like, okay, maybe the show will get canceled, but I'll have closure. Like, do you, is that so crazy? You want them to force, but, but that's but no because okay. The problem with that is that right out the bat, you're putting a clause into all these people's contracts that's admitting cancellation is going to happen. It's not admitting that it's going to happen. It's it's saying that if it were to happen, we are going to wrap up the show in three, four episodes, whatever. So I, I know on cable, some um, series have what they've done is they've done like a two hour movie. If they cancel it and then they're like, well, you know what? We're going to bring it back as a two-hour movie for, you know, just to wrap up a couple but, of things. But, okay. But don't you think, I mean, you're in PR and you work with numbers all the time and ratings and all that shit. <laughs> but don't you think that what I am saying is true? No, no, Because no. I purposely, like, I, li- I, I like sure the idea. I, I purposely do not, no longer get invested in network television. For that reason, and there have been shows that have come out that I'm like, when Manifest came out, I'm like, oh, that looks really good. Yeah. That looks really good, but nope, not gonna do it. Not gonna do it because this has never ended well for me. <laughs> I also wonder logistically, from an actor's perspective, that may actually hinder some actors from signing on to things because remember that they filmed the season be- way in advance. So you may film a season and be done by December, but then you're a mid season. So then. You don't start airing until March or whatever. So as it is, when you have those contracts, you're committed to that show. And I think a lot of actors won't sign it because they're like, well, but I want to be, I want to know that if it gets canceled, I can go do something else or that I have a break to go do a movie or whatever. I'm just saying, I'm thinking there's got to be a reason they haven't done it. But no, I just think that they canceled it and that's it. But a lot of these shows, because I find that with network television, because for example. Actually, that's one of the reasons that Dynasty had um, the first uh, TV movie. Because of that? Well, because Dynasty uh, ended on a cliffhanger. Because it ended on a cliffhanger, so they came back as a reunion movie I think, uh, to close everything up. I think, what's his name? Este... John Forsythe? Yeah, what was his character? Blake. Blake. I think Blake was like hanging from like something. From like a helicopter or yes. something. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah some, ran- some um, over-the-top thing. But, but, but to your point, they have done it in the past where it's like, okay, we're going to bring you back to do... I just find that with, ne- with network television, like, you know, a lot of these shows, like the Chicago Trilogy... Chicago Fire Med and um, PD. PD. It's like quick one hour shows. It's procedural. There's not, uh, you know, there's not an impending. Uh, no, no, plot. It's, it's a procedural. There, it's there, there's not case a, of the week. Yes. Even Law and Order. Oh, you know, my God. Yeah. Law and Order is like, we're done in an hour. For see the you most next part, week. you're in your hour. Yeah. But I just find that these shows on network television that have these like complex storylines don't do well. I, I think, mean, the only one I, I think Lost it, did well, but that was um, but, but okay, I mean, how long ago was Lost at this point? Right, and also when Lost came out, we didn't have as many cable options. Cable, we didn't have as many streaming options. Streaming options, streaming <laughs> options. That's what I meant. Um, but I think I, somebody's coming out with a streaming that's literally just called Plus Plus. But but I think that like there because a lot of these shows garner a, a fan following, yeah. a cult following. So. I don't know. I just think that for... And, and it has to be like millions of people, right? Because, I'll, I'll, you know... Even as low as it is, it's... Yeah. Right? And it's like, shit. Like, just end it. End it quickly. But it's like, I need to know where those people were in the case of Manifest for five and a half years. Like, I need to know. Like, I need to... And I don't know now. And I went down that rabbit hole. You know you know what's the most tragic thing is? <laughs> that now I know it's canceled after season three, but I got to finish watching all three seasons. Because now I want to know more. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. Right? So it's like, I'm going to set myself up for bigger failure. Like, 
I mean, sometimes, you know, Entertainment Weekly will do an interview with, what with the your creators. most disappointing can- cancellation? My most disappointing cancellation? Yes. You know what? Now that I think about it, this has been going on for a while because look at my so-called life. It's true. Bring it back to Wilson Cruz. Yeah. Uh, I never liked that show, but that's because I can't stand Claire Danes. What? Uh, I don't. I, I, there's just something about her. I just don't care to watch her. But but why? There's just She's some, like benign. There's just something about her that I just don't enjoy watching as an actor. Okay, whatever. What were you saying? I just don't. Uh, I don't know. I mean, for me, I would. I, it's not a drama, so the the show that I would have to say is like Happy Endings. Oh, that was a good one, and that went for three years. I but think, I think my first cancellation disappointment, <laughs> which you know prepared me well for the disappointment of cancellations, was just the ten of us on TGIF. <gasps> oh, I love just ten of us. So good. Actually, do you know why that show got canceled? Why? That the cancellation of that show is actually very interesting. Which was a spinoff of Growing Pains. Yep. That show actually got canceled and it still had very good ratings. Mm-hmm. The problem was that that was in the transition when they were switching over to like the um, Miller Boyette, I think, was going to take uh-huh. over the entire TGI TGIF. Friday, uh, TGI Friday, TGIF lineup. Mm-hmm. And ABC, part of their contract was that they wanted only Miller Boyette shows. And, and that was Lorimar. Uh huh. And they got and they canceled everything that wasn't one of the Miller Boyettes. So just the ten of us got canceled, not because it had bad ratings, but because of internal politics. Oh, life was so good when TGIF was Full House at eight o'clock, perfect. Uh, Full House at eight o'clock, Family Matters at eight thirty, uh, Perfect Strangers at know. nine, and just the ten of us at nine thirty. And then after that, Daddy Yang, yes, Daddy. My mom, go to bed. And be like, it's no. Friday. No, now I'm going to watch Arsenio Hall. <laughs> like, <laughs> Arsenio wasn't until 11. 11.30, actually. Okay, were you watching 2020? No, then I would watch uh, Channel 7 News. Oh, that's true. Yeah, which was an hour. That's right. Yeah. Hey, speaking of local newscasters, do you know who gave me some degree of comfort today? And I realized how much I freaking just love her, just Jackie, her, her existence. No, Glenna Milberg. Glenna Milberg, yeah. Actually, there was just something so... Watching her report from the scene of the, the building today, yeah. she's very comforting. Glenna Milberg has been around for a while. She was in, she's been, she was in Channel 7 for years, yeah. since like the early 90s, yeah, yeah. at least. And um, I have to tell you that Glenna Milberg's show uh, on Sundays with Michael Putney, Today in South Florida, mm-hmm. is like legit. It's like a legit political show. You know, yeah. it's, it's of local politics, yeah, 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 but, but, but it can go up against any of the big network really? TVs. Oh, yeah, yeah. They are great with the questions. I mean, they're very fair and they're very to the point. And she, she's a great journalist. Um, Glennabo, I didn't realize we we're going to talk about Glennabo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where's Rick Sanchez? Where is Rick Sanchez? <laughs> where is Rick Sanchez? Rick Sanchez. Man, Rick Sanchez and Sally Fitz were such a big part of our lives at they one were. point. But Sally, saying Sally Fitz is going to totally date us. So yeah. you sent her a get well card. I did. Yeah. Do you remember why? Yes, I do. Because she was uh, she was a carjacking victim. Yes, she was. Yeah, yeah. They didn't take they didn't take the car, but I mean, but she, yeah, but she fought back. Yeah, she fought back. <laughs> it's like she I'm was... Sally Fitz. Like, <laughs> and our listeners are probably like, who the hell who is the Sally Fitz? Fitz? <laughs> <laughs> Sally Fitz was an anchor in Channel 7. In the Look 90s, it up, children. Look it up. He's along with Jessica Aguirre. Oh, that woman had such big bangs. She had, she had a lot of hair. She had so much hair. A lot of volume. <laughs> yeah, like she, she used that diffuser she... in her blow dryer. You know that piece of your blow dryer that you're always like, who the hell uses this? <laughs> Jessica Aguirre That's did. Just... <laughs> and if you don't believe me, look up <laughs> Jessica Aguirre's WSVN 1990s. You'll agree with me. Uh, wait, it was on Deco Drive. It was her and Kelly Mitchell. And Kelly Mitchell. That's right. Who has since passed away? Kelly Mitchell and then Lynn Martinez. Lynn Martinez. I gotta. Lynn I think Mar- Lynn Martinez is immortal at this point. Lynn Martinez is the engine that could yeah. because <laughs> oh yeah, Lynn Martinez does like the frivolous Deco Drive stuff, and then, and then she'll be in front of a burning building. Yes. <laughs> and if it's in Channel Seven, you know it's something Inferno. Exactly. <laughs> Blazing Inferno. Towering Inferno. Towering Inferno, yeah. Amazing Inferno. Killer Waves. Terrifying you know. Inferno. A tumbling tornado. <laughs> they love the alliteration. A horrible hurricane. <laughs> Tracking Hurricane Alberto. <laughs> oh, 
That's Channel 7 that in a nutshell. So We've just given you all the headlines that have ever been on Channel 7. <laughs> and their and their, deco, and their um, newsplex. The newsplex. Do you remember the newsplex? I remember when the newsplex was, was new. It was like, oh my God, it's two floors. It's, like, it's a newsplex. <laughs> oh my God, I love that we're talking about Channel 7. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I, I I have to tell you I've moved on from Channel 7 I watch now NBC6 really yes Wait, with Jackie yes but from like the time I was a little little kid in the 80s like little kid yeah. I've always liked watching the news um, from the time I was a little kid to like I think my third like my early 30s I watched exclusively Channel 7. Like, really? Yes. Th- no other channels existed. Only 7. What? The main they came on at 10, so you got the news first. Right. Right. First at 10. First at 10, yes. Yes. First at 10. <laughs> yes. And then do you remember that in the 90s, they had headlines from Cuba? <laughs> yes. That Rick Sanchez would just, come out with a, a Cuban he, map. He would stand on the map. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and he would just kind of walk all over the map yes. as he told you the news. Yes. Headlines from Cuba. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Okay. If somebody out there is listening, can we find a bunch of Channel 7 alumni and do like a retrospective? Like, I, I, I want to do this now. Yeah. And I always liked about Channel 7 was that like their graphics, like for example, their their um, weather. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's not just the map. It's like, like you know, the map with like silver lining and like oh, no, no. shapes. There's, yes. You know, moving. It, 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 there's a lot going on. I think they yes. had emojis before emojis yes. were a thing. Yes. Uh, and then, you know, you had the dark times with uh, this guy. Bill Kamal. Bill Kamal. Who Man, turned, this is the second time we talk about Bill Kamal this week. He turned out to be a pedophile. Um, that was not fun. Not good. He's in jail. Of course he's in jail. Yeah, he's in jail. No, because I thought, you know, maybe they gave him a few years, but no. Oh, no, 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 no. He's still there, time. yeah. Um... Yeah, Channel 7, man. Those were some good times. I remember running into Craig Stevens all the time at clubs. <laughs> he's still there. He's still, he's still at Channel so 7. Is so is Belky Snoray. <laughs> Belky Snoray and her pixie cut are still going strong. Belky Snoray has had a pixie cut longer. Well, her pixie cut has grown out a little a little bit. Yes. But it's a little softer now. Yeah, but I, I feel like Belky Snoray should trademark the pixie cut. At this point, like I think she is Tinkerbell. Yeah, what I said first at ten, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the wacko in Waco. Oh, that would have cool. Yes, yeah. but you know that that's how it went down. That's like, exactly how it went down. <laughs> I, I I imagine though, I crisis guess we in the talk Caribbean. To our, our good friend who worked at Seven for a few years. I I think that at this point they have to be in on it. Oh, they, they have to top themselves. Yes. Like, you know, like yeah, right. Like, if you work at Channel 7, it's like, okay, you know we're coming up with the crazy headlines, right? right. It's like, last year it was, you know, horrible hurricane. Okay, right. this year it's going to be, like, deadly tornado. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just, like, it, you, you have shark to. Shark bite summer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's an SBS you I, don't I, want. I, you, you know you're seeing now the, the package. Oh, you I'm know. hearing the, like, yeah. Like because they always have like that like it's not in, it's not scary music but it's like it's telling you it's like this is serious yeah this is very important yeah and and then when they go to commercial it always has that weird like echo thing like it's like a <laughs> hey all these years and they're still in North Bay Village this is true Channel Seven they managed to build the newsplex in the, the news- same building <laughs> oh yeah after they built that newsplex that was <laughs> the equivalent <laughs> to like freaking the Roman Coliseum <laughs> that shit ain't going nowhere. <laughs> that shit ain't going nowhere. <laughs> They're there to stay, baby. Channel 7. Channel oh, 7. Lord. Well, that's as good a place as any to, to transition over to our last sodas. Wow, that made me thirsty. <laughs> yeah, that, that trip down memory lane made me thirsty. Uh, so do you do you want to go first? Is no, this you your go. first week back? Okay. Um, so I'm going to keep mine just really short and sweet. Um I am going to give this week my my last soda to all of the first responders who are working on the uh, the, the horrible incident at Surfside. Um, you know, as we said, for every reason earlier, you know, these are people who are putting their own lives at risk f- to help others, and it really does take a special kind of person. So, you know, my my last soda goes out to them. <laughs> Again, short and sweet. You know, there's not much more I can add to that. I just think it's there are people who really deserve every opportunity for recognition. Right. Of course, of course. Yeah. No. And and. You know, first responders, it's one of those things that, like, 
we all at some point take for granted. Right. I was just know, like, it's almost a thankless job. When, when like, a tragedy happens or something happens, you just expect them to yeah. be there. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah. And I mean, look, with my, when bringing it to something personal, when, you know, my grandmother, um, you know, the day she passed, um, there was like, within four minutes, it wasn't even five minutes of calling 911, there was like 20 people at my parents' house. And, you know, right. trying to save her. Right. And, um, you know, it's one of those things that it's like, wow, like these people probably stormed to get here. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, they come and they do this job and, and they got to move on to the next, you know. Yeah. And, and and yeah, we, we just, we automatically think they're going to show up. So yeah, yeah. And we don't even think about the logistics of it, and no, or, 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 that or the people, yeah, or 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 like in in this case, a tragedy of, of the building yeah. building collapse, see the trauma that those people have to deal with, with what they're dealing with, and yeah. what they're gonna find. Yeah, you know, there there's that's a PTSD situation, yes, absolutely. So yeah. yes, hats off to them. Um, so I actually uh, that's a, a very good soda so you know i i don't want to take away from that um my soda actually is going to the florida marlins and to a 13 year old trans um girl uh called chad sanford okay i don't know if you heard about this this week not. so this um this trans girl chad sanford she was being bullied at school but mm -hmm. actually there was a particular incident where um she was thrown on the ground and kicked by like six seven people in school oh wait a minute i do know chad is actually jose sent sent chad uh uh, uh it gets better card oh wow yeah well, well there we go yes um it's just terrible video have you seen the video i no, I awful, I, I, awful I, I, video. And of course, you know, it was posted on social media, I think, as one does. As one right? does, right. Right. Um, and just horrible, horrible video. And the Florida Marlins, I, you know, obviously they've been having different activities for Pride. <laughs> um, they let her uh, be part of like different celebrations and putting out like the colors and um, being on the field. I mm -hmm. think she either threw the first pitch or ran the, the, the mound, I was, I'm not sure, but they, they let her on the field and, you know, uh, really made her feel welcomed and had like a yeah. very like special, um, you know, made a very special experience for her. And, you know, I think th that's very important for her, not only personally with, you know, because of what she went through, but because of something that we talked about um, three or four weeks ago, um, which was the whole, you know, commercialization of pride <laughs> that some people are like really up in arms about yeah. it and you know it is true that when something is commercialized there's certain pitfalls of it and you know there's certain companies that do certain things not only in pride but just in, in, general, in yeah. general um to capitalize and make money on things that's true that's a given we know that but again i think that when you when you especially are a teenager and you're feeling everything that you're feeling and you're so confused and you feel the world is out against you and you see this huge entity make a day, make a product. Make an effort. An effort to to promote inclusion. You know, I think that people sometimes have to take their head out of their asses and yeah. put aside what they think to also be in the shoes of somebody who maybe this means something to. Right. You know, and again, two things can be true. You can say, hey, there's a lot of corporations that... Um, or just, on right, this, yeah. but it also helps could help a lot of you know especially right, younger right. people so not to get into that conversation again so but my hat's off to her and the florida marlins for yeah. doing something inclusive and trying to make her feel special because after what she went through with that ordeal that's yeah. that's uh yeah, that's both physical and emotional bummer yeah so. it, honestly it does not surprise me with uh with the marlins uh stepping up to the plate no pun intended stepping up to the plate like that um you know i've, I've worked with them in the past and they really do walk the walk and talk the talk they yeah. really you know for pride that is something that they that they have always embraced that they have you know turned it into they have an event a day they have a special game yeah. and etc and you know i even have to extend that to to the dolphins um i know this is about the marlins but 
we're pretty lucky down here that our our home teams really do make a genuine effort. I mean, you have the Heat, which you know Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union have a trans child yeah. as well. Um, you know, it's it, and I think that it goes a long way. And in sports teams, it's very important because I I still think that professional sports <laughs> is one of those for professional sports in the fandom. Right. It's one of those kind There's of. There's a lot like, of toxic masculinity. There is a lot of it's. It's all toxic masculinity, yeah, and um, there's still a lot of homophobia, whether it's in the fandom or in the whole or in the locker room so or to the speak. locker room in the whole realm of it. Yeah. So being a huge organization like that and being like we're celebrating Pride, like it or not, right? <laughs> you deal know, with it. You take a stand. So right. whatever. But yeah. So first responders and, you know. And the, Chad and the and Marlins. The Marlins. So anyway, well, everybody, uh, it was oh. good to be back. And it was good it's to. Good having you back. Even though we had to talk about some very unpleasant things. Yeah. Especially, you know, that whole building um, collapse. It's just, it's just My heart goes out awful, to everyone. Awful, awful. Um, but, you know, um, it was good to chat for a while and kind of take my mind off yes. of things. And I'm glad you are saying this again because it was weird to say it last last two weeks. We hope you listened, laughed, and learned. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, remember to grab your pastelito, your croqueta, and your cafecito. And thank you for joining us, everybody. Let's try to have a good weekend or, you know, be positive and... Uh, Just be good to each other. Be good to each other. And, you know, uh, as I we said earlier in the show, uh, the weird things about these tragedies is that somehow they bring out the community and kindness in people. So yeah. take that for what it's worth. So have a great weekend, everybody. See, hear you next week. All right. We didn't say bye. Better Let Me Tell You is co-hosted by Darian Borges and Ismaeliano, produced by Ismaeliano. And our theme, Better Let Me Tell You Freestyle, is composed by Michael Angelo Lomlaplex, the official gay guy. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes.